Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about what is a rotary encoder and uh, we are going to interface the rotary encoder with uh, ESP32 and uh, we are going to create a simple program then we will convert it into a free RTOS based system. Basically, a rotary encoder is an electromechanical device that converts the angular position or motion of a shaft to analog or digital code. So that's what the rotary encoder does. Uh, it tells you how much something has rotated. There are two types of these encoders, absolute encoders and incremental encoders. Today we are going to talk about the incremental encoder. Uh, the absolute encoder uh, it provide a unique digital code for each angular position they tell you the exact position of the shaft even after power loss and they are more complex and generally more expensive on the other side the incremental encoders these encoders generate pulses as shaft rotates they indicate change in position, not absolute position. So you have to keep track of their positions by yourself by simply incrementing a number. Uh, they, these are simpler and less expensive and mostly are widely used. The incremental encoders outputs a series of pulses as the shaft rotates so they usually have two pulses a and b and if we look into this here you can see in more detail um, this is a overall structure of this we have a rotating shaft and then a bearing and then we have a photo transistor sensors which are connected to the amplifier and uh, they provide the signal a and b and we have one light emitting diode which is uh, fed through a lens with uh, through a fixed slit and this is kind of slits we have on a uh, um, rotating shaft and there you will get a and b signals and uh, they will provide uh, this kind of pulses on a and b you have to keep track of the phase angles and uh, if the angle difference is like this and it means the position is going in a uh, clockwise direction and if the difference is something like this it means it is going counterclockwise direction so we can determine the detection of rotating by comparing the a and b phase direction or a counterclockwise direction the pulses are typically on two output channels labeled a and b which are offset by 90 degrees and uh, by monitoring the sequence of pulse a and b you can determine both the direction and amount of rotation how this works as encoder rotates the a and b channel pro produce square wave signals and the phase difference between a and b indicate the direction of the rotation the number of pulses generated is proportional to the amount of rotation so that's how you can keep track how much the uh, shaft is rotated or shield for your Arduino projects and uh, these are the pin configurations we have a ground signal then a VCC signal uh, there is an optional switch which is a push button you can use it or you can neglect this uh, all you have is you need output A and output B now let's move into our Arduino and see how we can code this. First of all, let's create a very simple pin configurations. For example, we will need uh, to define the encoder A pin and this pin would be 34. And uh, similarly, we have to define the B pin and this pin would be on 35 and if you are going to use the encoder button pin you can define it as well and we are using on 32 uh, because they are usually in a row and connected as you can see here we are using GPIO 34 35 and 32 
um, but if you are using an ADC channel you need to be careful about that but we are using these three pins 34 35 and 32 next we need three variables uh, these are encoder position uh, this this is a core variable which will be indicating uh, over actual position and uh, then we have two variables to hold a last state of uh, a and b because it is a scare wave we need to determine if they are previously in, on high or low and uh, then we can simply come into over setup and we can write over setup code let's uh, initialize over serial port after that we can simply initialize over encoder a pin b pin and encoder pin we can do this by uh, enabling the input pull up so we need to make sure that there is a pull up on these pins and we initialize three pins for a b and button pin next we can read the state of encoder a and b we can simply read these with a digital read function now all we need to do is uh, first of all read these two states encoder a state and encoder b state and after that we need to check if they are on a last state or not if a is not the state which is it was in last state and b is not equal to the last state then uh, either one of these is changed we need to make sure if a is not equal to the last state uh, or b is not equal to the last state so we need to make sure which one changes. then we need to check if b is not equal to a it means it is going in a, a positive direction otherwise in a negative direction it will be opposite in if the b chains first then we need to make sure that a is equal to b then we need to increment the encoder otherwise decrement it so uh, we can simply now send it to serial port and after that we can update the last state with the current state and next we need to optionally read the button pin and we will reset the encoder position and we will send in on a serial port that the encoder position has been changed so that's a simple code we'll simply upload it to the esp32 and check on a serial port it is uploading to the serial port now we will open in the serial monitor and here you can see as i move my encoder it update the position and if i change it into other direction it will go into a zero and if i press the button it will reset the position and it will start from zero again so that's how the encoder is working now we will change it into a free artos based system and we will determine how it will be converted into a free artos system now let's uh, create uh, an estimation for task First of all, we need to do the task separation task, which is which means we need to identify how many tasks we um, need. So basically, in there are uh, three main tasks, and uh, the first one is for encoder reading, and the second one is for button press detection to reset. The encoder state and uh, the main task would be the communication task which will take all of these um, parameters from encoder position and uh, give to the communication process so uh, the communication process will be updating uh, to the serial port this communication task would be uh, this communication task would also be something like for example giving data to the serial port or maybe giving data to um, web server or anything like that so um, we have encoder reading task button press task and communication 
so how we'll be sharing and the information between them so what we will be doing um, we will be using a queue for this and uh, the queues will be sharing data between uh, intertask communication so this is a perfect example for our um, previous tutorials where we already cover how to create a task in ESP32 free RTOS based system how to uh, pass the queues data through the for the intertask communication so we will be utilizing in over today's project so we have encoder task and then we have a button task and we have a communication task the encoder task will be dedicated to reading the encoder debouncing and updating the encoder position the button task would be handle button press and reset the uh, encoder position the communication task will send the encoder and button data to the system via serial port or wi-fi and in today's tutorial we are using as a serial port we are using a queue based communication so free autos queues pass encoder position changes and button press events between tasks and this decouples the task and improve the maintainability so let's try to update our code in a free autos based code we will be putting nothing inside the loop inside the setup what we are going to do first of all we will be initializing the serial port just like before then we will be creating a encoder queue this encoder queue will be uh, of uh, size 10 and if a data more than 10 will be um, blocked and will not pass until the first 10 are properly handled uh, the second parameter is the size of the data which is uh, encoder data we create a structure of encoder data I will talk about this later then I create a button queue uh, this will be of size 5 and uh, of the same encoder data structure then we will be creating a task and uh, this will be encoder task this is a first task and we will name it encoder task and the stack size would be uh, 2k and we will be running it on core 0 and then we will create a button task and the stack size would be 2k as well and it will be running on core 1 then we will be having a communication task the communication task usually need more stack size because it could be doing um, complex things like uh, web server handling so um, we will be passing it to core 0 and usually the background task could run successfully on core 0 and um, the priority wise the encoder task has a highest priority then we have the button task priority and the communication task has the least priority because maintaining the encoder state is more important than sending it to a server so we can wait for sending to the server but we cannot wait to update the encoder state because if we uh, create a delay to update the encoder state maybe we will miss a pulse so we need a higher priority encoder task to maintain a high accuracy encoder reading we had created uh, the queue handles like this and uh, this is our structure for uh, we create an enum because we will handling a two kind of states encoder position update state or encoder reset state and then we have a structure for uh, the command what kind of encoder command we are using and the actual value of the current encoder position and this is the data structure we are using uh, we simply created a type def for creating this structure and uh, then we have this over encoder task this is very similar to the previous code uh, and uh, we just put everything inside it 
and inside a while loop we will updating the encoder position just like we do before um, but rather than sending to a serial port what we are doing we are preparing our encoder data then we are uh, changing the command to position update and then we are putting a value of actual encoder position and we send this value uh, using a queue state a queue send function uh, so there is a problem with that that it is creating a duplicate data structures to put into the queue uh, but because we had covered the queue uh, way of communicating between the tasks so we are using it to keep it uh, with the previous um, connected with the previous uh, lectures then we will uh, keep our previous states with the current state and uh, we are doing one more thing here which is to receive a queue of button press and if uh, the button press sending anything in the inside the queue we will receive that command and we will make sure that it is a reset command if it is a reset we will update the encoder position to zero and we will uh, update our current position and we will pass this updated position to through a queue to the uh, encoder queue and we told that we reset our encoder position here so next we will simply giving a simple delay for debouncing uh, maybe we don't need this one millisecond delay if our encoder position is changing so rapidly we can change it uh, from one tick to um, anything other than that but but we need to maintain at least some uh, delay for other tasks to be working then we have a button task inside a button task we are simply reading a button press and we are updating the queue and we are using 200 uh, debounce delay and uh, then we simply create another task play for 10 to next update the button state so that's how we are handling our button press inside a communication task what we are doing we are um, taking a received data and we are waiting for anything to be appeared inside an encoder queue and uh, if something received we will make sure it is an update state then we will send an encoder value and we are simply creating a delay so that's how our code is working now let's try to upload this code inside our esp32 and see how it works. now our code has been uploaded let's open a serial terminal and see how it works so that's our encoder positions we can reset it and yeah so over encoder is working perfectly in a free RDOS environment so that's all for today's video thank you and see you in the next one